It seems like communication is the main thing that's happening. It keeps coming up in different and various ways. We've had to become aware of how we listen and begin to listen and uh, begin to listen in a different way. Often Swami Radha would say, um, anyone who could listen to her would make it in this lifetime. But she said it was very difficult to listen to a woman. For women to listen to women or men to listen to women. It's to find those places where we don't listen and to find out why. In clearing the mind or beginning to look at the mind, that the heart came very much into play. So there's something there. And what clouds us from listening? How does the mind, and what is that interference? Why don't we listen? The desire to make things clear, the desire to um, survive, and how do we do that all the time in surviving in our relationships, in the way we respond, and how promptly can we re-respond, redo it, make it clear, listen to what's being said and the difficulties that are there, and then have the desire and the humility to do it in the moment. So there's this difference between arrogance that you have the right to say what you want to say or how you want to say it, <laughs> and the humility to say it how other people can hear it, and then to listen to what's being said and to change. So in the prayer, opening prayer, we're talking about serving all of the aspects of the divine, serving the divine. And often we have and are serving ourselves. So when we cater to that part of mind that has had its way for a long time, it's in the same rut. To cater to the divine, what would that be? How would that look? How do you make that decision? That decisiveness to make a choice is very important. So that you move away from self-centeredness and move into something else, a wider, broader, expansive view of your world. And here we're given a lot. The people who come here are given very clear, direct, powerful teachings. And when you're given the teachings and the ego and the self-will are too much, the self-will will, like it's sort of like it sucks up the humility, like it uses it. It's too strong for the humility. Because if you know what humility or feels like, it, if, if the self-will is used to doing that, then the, it will get stronger with the teachings. Like that power will go where it's used to going. So, it's really important to look at and make that decision of what you want to create, what you want to initiate in your life, what you want to keep, and what you want to work towards. Who in yourself are you going to initiate into the work and into the teaching? So Mirada would also, like she's very perceptive it, People would think she was psychic because she would observe people and, and pick up those cues because where the thoughts go, the actions are. I mean, you can see yourself at supper. <laughs> you know, like if you're thinking about getting another 
pizza piece, then you get up and off you go and get it. I mean, like it's like there's a great power in thinking those thoughts. And so to become observant of what the actions are, to observe your own actions and the actions of other people and see if the actions are congruent with in yourself and with other people. And it's very interesting because here there is a special power of the light. So people come into this place enough and, and it's like we come in and we've got all of this stuff and the light kind of, oh, like this little spotlight, it's kind of like showing up all these actions and, and, and sometimes people come in and it's like immediately they're resisting and it's, it just becomes very obvious what they've brought with them into the light. And that's the decision, is to change. And that process, like it's a steady drop every day. I'm willing to change. I'm willing to look at this. I'm willing to go deeper. I'm willing to come forward. So if you really mean business, then you show it in your actions. You show it in your behavior. Because when she said that if you can listen uh, to me, you will make it in this lifetime, it was offered and said as an opportunity that the plane could take off. And you could miss the plane. For what reason? So she, she's often just very sad when people didn't respond to the light, didn't respond to that opportunity that was available. It requires effort. You can all see that. But she put everything in place so that there was a clarity So everything's a product of your mind. So it makes it easy to, in some ways, to, to follow it. You can follow the little <laughs> interactions and little t things that happen and the little products of your, of your mind. But that longing part that opens when the mind is cleared, when the humility is there, shows us that, that we are strangers on this earth. Like we have come from a different place. And to get back there, what do we have to do? And you can call it whatever you want. But somehow, that light reveals to us the reality of who we are. And to make it strong enough, and be determined enough, and accepting enough to believe. Often, um, Swami Radha would make the situations very confusing for people who are always concerned about chaos and confusion, especially in our own minds. But she would like deliberately make things confusing so that she would see where the people went to in that situation. Do you know where you want to go? Do you know what's important? Do you know what you're doing to the people around you? What are you really up to? Like so much of our lives is in manipulation and getting our own way. We probably all know how to do that. 
Do you know where you're really going? And so when you get in a confused place, can you pick out what you know? Can you go there? Can you go back to the center? So you, uh, so embracing chaos and confusion gives you all those opportunities to really know yourself. They're not going to be exactly how you planned them. They're going to be a little bit different. But in that way, you expand your mind, expand the world that you're in. You expand, you can create the world. It's not, like it can't be outside of yourself that's making you the way you are. Even though that's a lot easier <laughs> to, um, to blame it on, it really is your world. And you have to put up with it. You made it. You can create it how you like. But you have to know exactly what it is. So then you can begin to see how the divine operates. You can begin to see what you agreed to do. You can begin to understand what it means to be divine. Can you listen to that part for yourself? Can you listen to what's happening around you? 